Hey Quilties, it's Karen Marchetti. This time on Dual Process, Jody Robinson and I are working on a vertical diamond quilt. Uh, we both have an idea for you, so grab your printable and we'll get started. Hey guys, it's Karen. So for my idea, um, I, the first thing I'm going to do is rotate this quilt because I want to work. I want to work from left to right. Okay, so let me move this up. I think we can get the whole thing just about in there, perhaps. Okay, so now that we have the quilt sideways, loaded sideways. I'm going to assume that I can probably get about that much in one pass. I'm, I don't, again, we never know how large these are, but I don't think they would be huge. So, um, this is just what we're going with. Um, if it were larger, then you'd have to just do more, more rolls. So I'm going to start. I want these, these areas to kind of be feathers, like, um, two sets of half feathers. So when we start up here, this will just be a half row. And I'm just doing a swirl with a feather. You can do whatever feather you're happy with, whichever one you stitch best. These just go really fast. And then as you saw in the drawing, I did a kind of grid. And that grid is done continuously, well, pretty much continuously. So I'm going to stitch out, and I would use a ruler for this, okay, because there's no way I can draw it perfectly straight. But you're kind of just doing that. You're doing part of the row at once. So now I want to go up again on this side, whoop, over here, with these feathers. We'll just fill those in. Just half feathers. Kind of got to stretch them around those points a little bit. Just take your time. Shorten up those ones on the tight point. And then when I get up here, we're going to stitch the other half of that grid. And come back and then I can come over to here and stitch these feathers and you can you could have done the grid or the feathers it doesn't matter which order on this one just as long as you don't forget them because then you'll have to tie off and tie back on And these stitch really fast. Which is always a good thing, I think. Okay, so then we're going to come down and stitch that grid. Again, a ruler would make it much better, much more uh, precise. But you get the idea. And then we can go right back up. And finish the other, whoops, and finish the other side. So now I'm here, I'm going to come over to this one and we'll stitch down this grid. You just have to kind of remember which side you're on. And which one you're going to be stitching. Now remember feathers want to go up so I'm going to skip the other half of the grid and do the feathers up or over I should say. But when we turn the quilt it would be up. And 
And again, this would be so much neater if I were stitching it instead of drawing it. But this is mainly just to give you the idea on the path and how we would accomplish it. So now I'll come over here and stitch the rest of that grid. And again, we want to go up. So I'm going to continue the rest of this and I'll bring you back at the end. Okay, so now we're coming up that last set of feathers. Again, it's only a half feather, and it's really only a half because that's all the quilt that's left. So we'll just stitch these up, and then we'll be able to finish that grid going back down, which made it completely continuous. Finish up the grid. And it is done. All right, so let's rotate this around. All right, and there you can see a very messy drawn quilt. Um, but you did see the really neat drawing in the beginning. Again, this was just to cover the path. I hope you got some inspiration out of it and um, maybe a few ideas. Hi everyone, it's Jody. Um, so on this vertical diamonds quilt, I'm going to share a design that you might want to try. It's, um, I think it's going to be, it's really pretty and it's going to go fairly quick. Um, you'll notice by looking here that I have turned the quilt to, so it's oriented with the, this direction because when I was looking at this, I realized that the design would be much easier to stitch going this way across the quilt, as opposed to, you know, if it was oriented the other way, it, it wouldn't be able to be continuous. So we're going to pretend I turned um, the, the, the surface of the quilt to draw on in the same direction. This is how I would load it onto the machine just so that I'd be able to quilt it a little easier and nice and continuously. So we're going to go ahead and get started and really we can do each pass pretty much continuously. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right up here. We're going to fill in these triangles first and I'm just going to travel along that edge and the loops are going to go in to fill each of these diamond half diamonds. So I'm going to loop and then you get a nice taller one in there to fill that. And then it just allows you to travel right into the next one. Right to the next one. Then we get to this side. 
you have two options. We could work our way back in the white portions, these diamonds, the open ones. But I'm going to go ahead and come down here. I'm going to just travel because we're on the outside edge. And I'm going to go ahead and do my loops in the other direction. Same thing, just different direction. Ooh, they're kind of wobbly loops there. And just repeat the same thing that you did on the upper half diamond. At this point, we can now work our way back through the white. And what we're, this is going to require two passes. So we're going to go over and then back. And on, for this, what I actually would do just probably for the first few passes is go ahead and kind of give myself a little roughly chalked half in these. And I would probably just do it with a piece of school chalk or something quick. Doesn't need to be too precise. So I know where the half point is. Because what we're going to do is basically it's kind of like a continuous curve. And I'll just show you down here real quick on an open one. What we're going to do is we're going to curve and put a loop in the center. Loop in the center. And then when we come back, we're going to do the same thing. And what's going to happen is those loops are going to well, that's a little messy, but the loops are going to meet in the center to make kind of a nice flower shape. So we'll just do that, but you can't do the whole diamond. So what we're going to do is start up here and we're going to do, and I'm aiming for that center point. That's why I wanted to mark that. And you can travel from one to the other. Ooh. I think it's actually easier to stitch than it is to draw. And then we'll come back and do the same thing on the bottom. Nice and fast to stitch, but still very pretty. And then of course we'll come down here and we'll start with our loops. So it's a continuous process until you need to roll, of course. And usually for these loops, what I do is I, in my head, usually I'm counting like one, two, center, one, two, to help me kind of stay on track, travel down, and this would be half a loop. Boy, drawing it's the same as stitching it. Always looks a little bit different. Go in the other direction. And again, this last one will be a half. Travel down and repeat that process. Back over again. I really like loops. I mean, they're so nice and easy to do, but still pretty. And then we'll travel back up here and now we'll be going the other direction. And if I had my little half lines marked here, and I find that for me, I usually need a couple, maybe a few rows just to get the feel for where that center is. And then I tend to be okay to do the rest. So this time we're going to go the other direction. Of course, if you find it easier to go um, from left to right, that's totally fine. You just want to tie off. And that loop's aiming for the center. Loop to the center or close. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Loop and then back. Same thing. Loop towards the center. And you get that nice little flower shape. Whoop. And then let's repeat that. So come down here. I'm going to go ahead and do the loops first. One, two, center, one, two, travel.
And you can see how quick that would go once you get the flow for it. And then we'll go ahead and do our, I like to start from the top, so I would probably travel up here to just feel more comfortable going that way. I can't believe how wobbly it is. <laughs> okay. And so at this point, I mean, I guess we don't really have any way to tell how big this, the scale of the quilt is. But, you know, at this point, you may need to advance your quilt. And, you know, it's easy enough. You would advance your quilt and then just start and repeat that whole process starting from here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish drawing the rest of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And of course, um, it was a really nice, flowing, easy, almost actually when you look at this, reads as an all-over quilting design. Um, so I hope you guys might give it a try. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope that you have enjoyed today's designs and be sure to join us for the next episode of Dual Process.